Hello everyone. I'm here with another tutorial from series of the Kikolog. And in this tutorial, as I promised, I'm going to show you how you can fetch the data of the event log into external APP. We just, before we discussed about the, how you can configure the event log in Kikolog, how you can fetch this data through the API, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can show this event log in external APP. So if you are interested in this video, please stay with me and let's get started. First, uh, I'm going to have the one demo about uh, this uh, operational. Here I have my own APP. I will write down the username and password. Then uh, it will come to my develop app and then I added one part as an event log. When I click on the event log, it will search the data in the events of the Kiki log and the pass this information uh, over to this app. As you can see here, there is the, uh, it's reading the token and it's working now yes here you go and you can see this is the data uh, which is fetched from the api and uh, data now you can see here in external app so for this part uh it is uh it's just for the show in the demo and i will jump to the coding part to explain uh, what i have done for showing this uh, event log in external app. Okay, this is the the part for getting the data of the event. But uh, for this scenario of the how you can connect with the, uh, for example, the API and key log, you can watch other videos about the how you can connect with the Kiki log and fetch the data. Uh, I will I will put this all, all relevant videos under this uh, tutorial and you can watch it. So let's jump to the this code. I have defined the one uh, as a, a filter login event and for some attribute as an access token event type client ID user ID. Here I said okay if I got some token uh, which, uh, sorry, if this is a non, then give me the non for the token. Then what we need is the URI for the event, which is uh, here you can see this is the real name and also here is the event. And then I define the parameters. This I uh, put it as a max 10 because there is a filter how many uh, logs in the last 10, last five, something like that, you have to define it. So I defined as a 10, it's giving me the last 10 events. Then uh, I defined the event types, uh, and then uh, I said that, okay, if we have such a event type, it would add it in the event types, which is coming here. And I defined the event types of the different types of that login, log out, uh, code to token. These are the types of the, the events which you can see in the log of the, the events. When you go to, um, to the key log and you will find all these logs, okay? All these logs you will find it over there so if you need to filter a specific item then you have to add it here so in my case i added log in log out a code to to token these are the case for purpose of the distant wall then if here they are saying that if there is the such this data or event then put it in the event types and event types, it will have some filter based on the these items and say, okay, guys, it, 
we have such these kind of the the events put it in the type of that uh, as a parameter the same scenario will come for the client id we define the in the parameter as a client and define it in client id same for user come to user id and then we will come to header part which is uh, con type, content type of that is application JSON and authorization is uh, access token. So this is the access token which you need to get it from the, the API of the access token. Again, I will not go in this video about this uh, scenario, but if you are interested how you can get it, please watch my uh, other videos about this. And then we will come to the response of the this uh, API, and we will get all the event URL header and parameters. And if everything is okay, so show me this two hundred code uh, and the response as a JSON. And uh, these are the details for each event which is include the event type. So I wrote as a one loop that every time uh, it will check all these items one by one. And one of them is user information, which in, uh, I, I put it here, uh, I will explain about this, but it's up to you. If you want to get the user information also, there is a young user URI for the user information so this is for the user information and then is this is the access token and event which is user id uh the same scenario for the user uh, uh for the user information and also for event type okay so if is uh event type is null then it will show you as a an a and here, if it's failed, then definitely it will show the uh, the failed status code. Uh, so this is for the, the, the error part. Um, let's jump to user information. For user information, so I define as access token user ID. So you need to send this uh, URI for the getting the user information. And this is this is the user ID, which you will define it. And then the same scenario for the header, and also the same scenario for the response. You will get the the user URL and the header, and the response code. If it's two hundred, then the response is showing as a JSON. If not, then give me error. Uh, one thing is very important to show the timestamp. The timestamp, which is showing in the if uh, let's get back to yes, you can see here there is a timestamp is based on the millisecond. So you need to define the timestamp as a proper format. Otherwise, this doesn't make sense. So what you should do is that uh, what I have done is first I defined this format and uh, this divided in 1000 because it's in millisecond as a for, for the uh, time stamp to one format of date and time. Then I defined the one Jinja custom filter as a date and time and it has the two parameter as the value and also the format which is this format str f time this is the format of that and then we will uh, put this convert in fact this time stamp to the to date and time. Uh, so this is first you need to custom filter 
and after that you have to convert the time stamp to date time which you already defined for the format of that uh, then you would need to jump to the one HTML part it's very simple HTML you should write and just I'm explaining that this part you have to uh, write such this code to every time iterate for the event uh, in in the login events for each and for each item it will iterate and then the first it's even is mixed with user ID uh, whatever the, the the events which is coming from the user ID it will show here and if it's null then definitely it will show it as a null and this is the details of the username for showing the event the, uh, the username and this is for the time which is we defined about the timestamp and this is the format for the timestamp showing in uh, the U U GUI which we already defined okay thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed from this tutorial please don't forget to share or like and subscribe this channel if you didn't yet and if you have any question please do please write it down in the comments and i will try my best to reach you out as soon as possible and see you in the next one